Hey, superstars, thanks for joining us today. I'm your host, Aaron Zakowski, and today I'm chatting with Nachum Kligman. Nachum is a serial entrepreneur and currently the founder and CEO of Book Like a Boss, an all-in-one platform helping entrepreneurs and companies to create optimized landing pages that convert your visitors into scheduled meetings and customers. Hey, Nachum, how are you doing today? Great, Aaron. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited to have you on the show. I uh, would love for you to maybe introduce yourself a little bit and tell us a little bit about your company. Sure. So uh, my name is Nachum Kligman. Uh, I'm actually turning 50 this week. I guess uh, that's a birthday. Pretty monumental. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, about in, about five six years ago, I um, I had a I found a pain in the market where I was uh, I authored a book and I had a successful podcast and I was doing a startup coaching and people were reaching out to me all the time and they were saying, you know, hey, you know, can I take you out for coffee? Can I buy you lunch? And I was just like, well, you know, I charge my time. Oh, how much do you charge? Two hundred fifty dollars an hour. Oh, $250 an hour, what does it include? And just a lot of wasted time going back and forth. And I said, I wish there was a way that when somebody contacts me for the first time, I could just say to them, here's my link. And they could go to that link and they could see testimonials about me. They could watch a video from me. They could uh, see frequently asked questions. So I know that all the questions are answers. They have all the services that I offer and they could have my calendar. They could book me and pay for it all from that one page. That way there's no back and forth. They understand uh, what I charge, what I charge for, why I charge what I charge um, in a very friendly way. And uh, it didn't exist. Um, of course, there were calendar apps out there and some do-it-yourself sites. I, like I tried building it in WordPress and it was just a nightmare. And I was going to hire somebody in WordPress to do it. And he wanted $3,000 to build it. I said, forget it. And um, I guess it was a few, uh, as I was thinking about this pain point, I had a few weeks later, a friend of mine, uh, sends me an email from his sister. His sister is a masseuse and she is not technical at all. And she said, listen, I'm just looking for an easy one page website that says, these are the massages I offer. Here's my calendar. Let them book me and pay for it all in one place. Does such a thing exist? So my friend is not technical. He sent it to me. And I said, you know what? That's when that's when the, the, the bells went off. I said, you know, what? if I, as a business coach has this need and she as a masseuse has this need, I bet there are millions of other people around the world that have this need for an easy to use software that makes it simple to sell services online. Gig economy growing, remote working, especially now, uh, freelancing taking off like it has. Um, and sure enough, uh, you know, we, I, I pitched the idea to a good friend of mine, my co-founder, David Yudkowitz, and he loved it. And we set out to build it and we launched it in uh, 2017. So, so five years. And uh, from what I understand, there's been some tremendous growth since then. Yeah, we've had a lot of growth. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been a challenge because we decided to bootstrap the company just because in, in past companies, I've done the VC route and, I, you know, I wanted something different for this company. Uh, but yeah, we have over 60,000 users in over 100 countries, 24 currencies, six languages, and uh, yeah, we continue to grow. Amazing. Um, Actually, take, taking a step step back towards kind of validation of that idea, was, was it as simple as you you felt like you had the need, you heard one more person say they had the need, and you just said, like, it must be there? Or did you go ahead and do, like, more research before deciding to, to really jump in? Yeah, it's a great question. So it's funny because when I consult and I coach people, I say, before you do anything, go out and find 30 customers that are willing to pay for what you had. Mm -hmm. But um, because I have the internet background, I've been in high tech for, you know, more than 20 years, uh, I immediately saw the pain in the market. and, and the flash bulbs went off and, you know, I did my research just to see if there's anything else out there. And of course there was Wix and, uh, you know, web, uh, WordPress and calendars, and, but there was nothing that was simple and easy for the non-tech person uh, to go out and build. So I knew right away that it had potential to be um, a big winner. So I didn't really go out and do more re research, but I knew the need was there. Fair enough. Um, so, so tell us a little bit, you know, how did you grow to this stage? I mean, five years, what do you say, 60,000 users, that's tremendous. What, did, what have you done to be able to get yourself to that stage so quickly? So it's a great question. It's funny because, you know, after spending a year and a half building it from like late 2015 till June 2017, you know, we, we had like a soft launch. Um, and uh, when we, after building it for over a year, we launched it and we got one person to sign up. And it was like so depressing. I can't even tell you. We're like, we just spent a year plus building this and we just did this whole big launch and only one person signed up. Uh, I guess if you're not embarrassed from your first MVP, right? Exactly. But, uh, but um, we had a, 
I guess you could say is a, a lucky break, but we met, I think, you know, I'm also Noah Kagan sure. from uh, AppSumo and um, we got an AppSumo and that's when things really took off for us because we went from like about 250 users at the time to over 5,000 in three weeks. Um, and then uh, based on those 5,000 users, the nature of our software is that people by using it, other people find out about it. Right, you had powered by book like a boss on there. After you know, you get a, a, an email confirmation or a reminder email and says, you know, get your own booking page. So we were able to organically grow, and also we had a lot of affiliates. And uh, so between our affiliates and and uh, uh, users, we've been naturally growing. In fact, we haven't really spent much on uh, outbound marketing to this day. Amazing. So I kind of want to find out a little bit more about the AppSumo route, right? Because I've spoken with many companies over the year who have thought about doing and maybe have done it. And I know the challenge a lot of the time with companies I've spoken with, with AppSumo is it's generally a lifetime deal. You get a whole bunch of people who kind of jump on, maybe they activate, maybe they don't. They're not always the best quality users, but some segment of them are. You get this little bit of an infusion in cash, but then there's kind of this weight you've got to carry all these lifetime users for a long time. But it sounds like you you had that and you were able to kind of you know bootstrap that initial 5,000 you know, I, I actually honestly expect you to say like, you know, a huge chunk of what you had came from AppSumo, but it's really a very small piece. And it sounds like that actually led to a lot more growth. So, well, since that we did, we did another AppSumo campaign. I don't, I don't remember, it was a year later or maybe in the year later, we, we took in another 5,000. Mm -hmm. So we actually have over 10,000 uh, Sumo links or, you know, AppSumo users in our yeah. system. Yeah. And we love them because, you know, we have uh, what's called, uh, how do you say it in English? A karatatov. What do you? Uh... Appreciation. Appreciation, yeah, because they gave us tremendous feedback. They helped spread the word. Um, they let us know, you know, what were the uh, features that they needed and they wanted. And of course, you know, thankfully, you know, we were smart enough back then to have ways to be able to charge them in the future uh, for certain features that we were sort of holding back. But the, one, of the, one of the main ones was that uh, having the Book Like a Boss branding on the pages. We tried to make it small. We didn't want to get into people's faces, but it had to be there enough that, you know, you can't live if you, on, on just a lifetime deal and supporting people without having a way to upgrade them uh, or having a way to make money from them. So there's either two ways to make money for them. One is by them using the software and making it good and uh, taking care of them. They're going to keep using it, which is going to help sp keep spreading the word, mm -hmm. right? Or you have to have a way for them to upgrade if they want to remove the the uh, book like a boss um logos uh, and branding, right? So then we, we had a way for them to do that. And then when we came up with company plans a few years later, then we gave them a special deal to upgrade from their regular plans to the company plans. Uh, so wow. there's always different ways to uh, monetize. And it wasn't like out to ouch get them. It's just the reality is you're right. If, if you can't support 10,000 people and not have a way to monetize them because they'll just, and I'm not saying this for, for absolute users, but specifically just any users, you know, they take your time, they take your, you know, your space and they take, you know, customer support. Um, but we've loved them. We've always taken care of them. We've kept our promises, you know, all new features that come in that don't cost us really more money. We give to them. Um, and we have many users, you know, you know, that for five years have been using us. Amazing. Yeah. So, so it sounds like a, a big chunk of your growth came from the, I guess the, the viral product led element of, these AppSumo users. Um, and you said, the, you know, a lot of the other part of the growth has come from affiliates. I'm talking about that a yeah. little bit. Yeah, I'll talk about affiliates, but it was, yeah. So we had about 10,000 um, from AppSumo and, and over the years, they, they probably brought in at least another 10,000 users or so, maybe even more by now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had affiliates. We put all of the Sumo, uh, Sumo links into our affiliate program as well with a special offer uh, to encourage them to help spread the word. Um, and, uh, we're actually going to be, you're the first to hear this, but we're actually going to be launching a new partners program, um, uh, in the, over the next couple of weeks, because, you know, I, I think, especially with the product of ours, word of mouth and, you know, uh, and being able to get out there in a large scale, uh, you know, with the right partner program, I think we could grow, you know, uh, even further without having to spend money on outbound marketing, um, not to say there's not a place for outbound marketing. Obviously, there is, but as a bootstrap company, you know, if you don't have that twenty thousand a month, thirty thousand dollars a month to spend on it, mm -hmm. you got to start to think out of the box. But so our affiliates helped us grow. We, you know, we've paid out over six figures in uh, uh, almost six figures um, in affiliate sales. 
Um, but really another growth spurt came in 2020 um, with COVID. And there's yeah, actually, a, yeah, there's actually, um, it's a great lesson and, and something that we're going to be focusing on ourselves more also as well uh, for growing SaaS companies in general, and that is partnerships. And we were one of Zoom's top uh, calendar apps in their marketplace. In fact, our logo was, they've changed it since then, but on the marketplace, like our logo was one of the logos up there with Google and LinkedIn and all these other places. Wow. Uh, our logo was up there. They, and they absolutely loved our company and loved our branding. They even invited me to speak at one of their conferences. It was during a Jewish holiday, so uh, I wasn't able to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but when 2020 hit and Zoom, you know, shot, shot like a rocket, we literally doubled our sales um and and users in uh in a year Amazing. without any without without doing anything extra uh-huh. uh that was larger due for being in the marketplace and you know and and also the right time you know sad as it was you know it was a it was a product that was very much needed uh at that time but that really enforces the idea that if you just keep you know chugging away and spinning the flywheel and trying to get traction there will be those little points in time where you just end up being in the right place at the right time and you see that 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 increase in growth Absolutely. Absolutely. And I I think especially, you know, our product is not an expensive product with our company plans. Yeah. Now I I think our top clients paying us uh, $1,100 a month. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course there's room for for, for bigger clients and they could pay us more, but for the large part, most of our users are solopreneurs, individuals, you know um, you know, I'd say probably like 90% of our users are, are individuals. And so the price point of between $9 to $30 is not something they could hire a sales team for. Mm-hmm. Right? It just wouldn't wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be profitable. Um, so you have to figure out other ways in order to grow and sustain that growth. Um, you know, without having an inbound sales team, uh, et cetera. Right, and, and even I would imagine paid acquisition through through paid ads and things like that would also be challenging because the the uh, cost per acquisition would have to be relatively low because your your LTV isn't that high. I would imagine, right? Exactly. Like, yeah, our our LTV is now. Um, uh, LTV is uh, is about five hundred dollars now, right? Which is which is pretty good, but you know, in, in when it comes to ad spending, you know, besides you know, I believe in, in paying people and paying them what they're worth and paying them correctly, and you know, a good ad guy is going to cost you four or five thousand dollars a month, right. and if you're going to spend four or five thousand dollars a month on an ad person, you know, you, you better have twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars to spend. Otherwise, why are you paying the guy four to five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right? So, at, you know, as you're bootstrapping, you're you're itching up, and you're you know trying to get to uh, profitability, and you're trying to grow. Um, it can become uh, pretty expensive. Yeah, I hear that. Um, so, in terms of kind of this this uh, you know we'll say organic growth that you've had, you know, without paid or outbound or any of that, um, do you have anybody else in your team that's helping you with with, with marketing and just kind of building the brand and generating generating more inbound? Um, yeah, so we, we actually have somebody that's doing inbound sales, uh, Moshe, so that, you know, anybody that wants a demo, uh, they'll book time with him and, you know, he'll give a demo and he'll run people through it. And so we have somebody doing inbound, especially for the company plans where it may need a little bit more handholding. Um, plus anybody in the company plan will also give them an hour of free, uh, consulting and helping them set up their pages and, uh, et cetera. Uh, but we also have, um, Justin, uh, Hammond, who is our, uh, VP of growth. Uh, he joined the company, gosh, I think about a year ago. He started off as a freelancer for us. He was doing some writing, rewriting our emails for us. And he's like a fantastic marketer and a growth guy. And he's been uh, extremely valuable to the team. Amazing. Um, looking into the future, where, where do you see the best opportunities for for growth beyond kind of what's worked for you in the past? I, I think partnerships. I think that's something that, you know, we have to delve into more. You know, it's hard, you know, because we have a small development team. So you always want to come out with a new feature. But yeah, sometimes you have to say, well, is that new feature going to help us grow more? Or is an integration, you know, with, um, uh, uh, you know, Salesforce, is that going to bring us more eyeballs? Um, and, as, and I was actually just speaking uh, to an investor, a uh, potential investor recently. And he said, you know, go go after the marketplaces, go after the integrations, Right. That's going to be your next your next growth spurt, being where the people are mm-hmm. and sort of leveraging relationships in order to get out there. Um, and so that's something it's 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 tough because you know as a visionary and as someone that that, that you know my to do list our to do list for for our um, um, features is you know extremely long. Yeah. But at yeah. the same time, you also have to focus on growth. So we have to take people off of 
the feature stuff and start putting them into the integrations. But you know, uh, you can't live on uh, good vibes alone, I guess. Exactly, and and listen, a lot, a big chunk of the uh, entrepreneurial communities that I'm hanging out with are are talking about marketplaces, whether it's Shopify or Chrome extensions, et cetera. Like, there's just so many places to be found within those markets because, like you said, the attention is already there. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's something. And it's funny because we've had this discussion before. My, my team and I, and, you know, and we know we want to be in these marketplaces. We want to, you know, uh, be there, but like, there's just so much to do and never enough time and never enough developers. And, uh, you know, it's actually, we've been bootstrapping for all this time, but now we've, we've actually uh, decided to open up a round in order to actually raise money for the first time to really put it into uh, uh, growth. Because mostly because we, we see this huge opportunity now with remote working, with, you know, the freelance economy, um, and with uh, the gig economy and side hustling and, you know, the sad state of uh, where the market is today and people, you know, people just really need the extra income right. Uh, right. In, order, in order just to, to survive. And so we want to be there for them and we want to really blow this out. So uh, we've actually decided to come out of our bootstrapping ways. Well, it sounds like you, you've, by waiting as long as you could, you're probably making the right decision in terms of when's the right time to do that. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's at some point you have to say, you know, either, um, you know, you know, it's time. To, you know, we've been doing this for seven years now, right? And we could continue this this pace, and you know, but if we really want to grow, if you really want to change, you know, change the way things work and, and and really be meaningful to to a lot of people, you know, there's no other way to do it than besides growing and getting out there. And there's only so much you could do without um, without investment uh, money coming in. Sure. Um, what's been your biggest struggle growing the company? What's the biggest challenge for you? Uh, I think it's like, like what we talked about, you know, if the ways to, you know, the most common ways to grow is, you know, advertising, outbound marketing or outbound sales or, um, you know, integrations. And those three things we've been held back for because, because due to lack of funds, uh, you know, and th that was a choice we made. Thankfully, because we, you know, we have a small team, you know, we're a team of nine people mm -hmm. um, and we've been able to grow consistently and continue to grow and continue to improve on the product. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy about it. I mean, my, my, uh, from a, uh, equity perspective, my, my partner and I, my co-founder and I, we still, you know, own the large majority of the company, which at this stage in the game is, uh, is pretty rare. So, you know, we feel we're in a good position. We feel, you know, the product is ripe for, uh, getting out there and now it's just a matter of uh, pulling the trigger and doing it. All right. Amazing. Um, let's jump into the right lightning round, a couple uh quick questions, and uh we'll wrap it up from there. All right. So sure. won't, won't be too hard. Um <laughs> is there a book that you recommend to our listeners? Could be a business book or, or a uh non-business book. Um I'm reading right now another thing I, I guess I should have spoken about, and I guess it's good you brought it up, but uh Pat Flynn has um a book on um on community. Um uh the name skips me now because you put me on the spot, but uh What's his uh, oh, what's his book on community? Anyway, you know, I uh, I, I read it once when it first came out, and I'm rereading it because mm -hmm. community is such an, an important part of growth today, and I think of any successful company, and you know, and that's another thing that we do. I, th I think we do right with Book Like a Boss is that we actually have a real community. We have over 6,400 um, bosses in our Facebook group, and um, we call each other bosses, and they feel that they're part of something bigger than just you know, a, a simple software that they're using. Um, so community is uh, definitely uh, the way to go. Right. I mean, the idea sounds powerful. The idea to have a, a community like that, that's all kind of reinforcing each other to, to use the product sounds great. And uh, we'll look up the name of that book and make sure that it's in the show notes for you. Um, yeah, now, uh, super fans, that's it. Super fans. All right. So there, there's yeah. the recommendation. Super fans by Pat Flynn. Um, next question. Um, other than Book Like a Boss, what's your favorite marketing or productivity tool? Um, I guess intercom, uh, you know, we use them pretty much for, for everything when it comes to customer success, which obviously is also very important for growth. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't take care of your customers, they're not going to take care of you. Right. Um, so, uh, and then with intercom, we're able to, you know, have live chat, we're able to email, we're able to put up marketing messages. Um, it's expensive, but I think it's worth, worth the expense because, uh, you know, taking care of your of your customers should be like one of the top priorities of any company. 
Right. And you're definitely not the first guest I've had on this show who's mentioned Intercom as one of the favorite tools. Yeah. Uh, so it's a popular one. Um, who's your favorite marketer or business leader that you're learning from these days? Uh, for sure, it's uh, um, Russell uh, Russell Brunson. I call him my marketing my marketing rabbi. I've been a, a student of his for 20 years or so. I'm sure he'd appreciate that title. Yeah, <laughs> I always call him out on it on on Twitter, but I, I I've gotten a few uh, you know responses from him over the years. Uh-huh. But he's just he's just genius, um, and he's legendary, and his marketing mind is is just unbelievable. He makes it look so simple, right? And, and you don't re- you don't you don't even realize how much thought went into his presentation, how much thought went into everything he says in his speeches and everything he writes, how much you know you know uh, knowledge is behind all those things. Yeah. Um, and what he was able to do with click funnels, which is, you know, sort of what we're marketing ourselves off after, you know, they didn't take any funding. Maybe they did recently, but for the first, you know, seven, eight years, they didn't take any funding and they grew to a hundred million uh, a year revenue company. And that was largely due to the community. That was largely due to affiliates. That was largely due to, you know, uh, um, without any ad spend. Right. So uh, he's definitely somebody that uh, I look up to and I learned from. Yeah. He's a great one. Um and are there any online uh, communities that you're part of that you're learning from? Um, so, I'm, I mean, I am part of a few Facebook groups. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's one on SEO that I really like. Um, but mostly, I just, I just, mostly, I mean, besides our, our own group, mm-hmm. I haven't really had time. Okay. Probably could find more value in them. Uh, definitely, there's some SaaS groups I'm part of, which is great to watch and follow and see other SaaS leaders uh, participate and ask questions. And I'll ask questions from time to time. Um, but as an everyday type, you know, it, it reminds me because I was just thinking about it um, last week. Like, when is LinkedIn going to, you know, soup up their their groups game? Right? It's crazy. It's been they been dead for a long time groups. over there. The groups. It's been dead, and 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 it's it's and they keep growing LinkedIn, but they got to be able to do something better with groups make it more valuable to the users, make it more valuable for people to post there and connect with over there. Um, I'm surprised they haven't, but. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Right. Link, LinkedIn has been growing the last two years, I think, despite themselves and their their terrible record of, of innovation right. and, and growth of features. No matter how hard they try to like really mess things over, they still seem to grow. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, they've built the community, I guess, that we need, even though they can't build, build the right features for us. Yeah. Um, last question. Um, where can our listeners go to learn more about you? Uh, well, you could, there's a couple ways. I mean, obviously, booklikeaboss.com is yep. a great place uh, to check out what we're all about. You can find me on Twitter at Kligman, K L I G M A N. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Nahum Kligman. And um, you can actually, if you want to see what a booking page looks like, you could go to nahum.co, N A C H U M.co, and you can see my personal uh, branded booking page, see what all the uh, fuss is about. That seems like a great idea. Definitely would encourage everyone to use uh, Book Like a Boss. Go check it out. I think so many people listening probably do some consulting element to their business and could probably uh, use the product themselves. Yeah. I mean, it's great. It's not even, I'll just give another one more plug because it's not even Please. for consultants. We have, you know, people that are just booking meetings. Um, you know, people, when they first, when, it used to drive me crazy and people would, would, I would start telling what they do. So I said, oh, you're like Calendly? And we're like, no, we're not Calendly. We're nothing like Calendly. So if you go to notcalendly.com, we actually have a whole website where we're showing like over, you know, 30 differences between us and them. That's really so we funny. can do almost everything that they do, but uh, we're still uh, way different to give you much more. Amazing. I love that play. Um, anyways, Nachum, this has been amazing. You've shared a ton of information and knowledge in, in a very short period of time, and I appreciate it. And I'm sure our listeners are going to get a lot out of it as well. Awesome. And thank you so much for having me on the show. Thanks for coming on.